I got drawn in and began to read about 5G and the rollout and followed through and did a lot of research and gathered some people who are have joined in this effort we're called uh, New York City 5G Wake Up Call. People are oblivious with all the advertising for the joys of high speed downloads that there are thousands of studies that actually prove uh, microwave damage to the biological processes over time. We're dealing with a really formidable affront to our health, our privacy, our security, our future, animal life, bees, insects. It's already happening in New York City um, and many other cities around the country. Um, they're rolling it out and the effects are horrendous. Um, they can be horrendous. A uh, dear close friend of mine uh, came to me about two months ago, called me up and said, I can't live in my apartment building anymore. They just installed 25 smart meters in the basement and I've got nosebleeds and heart palpitations and headaches. I can't stay here. Her she and her husband live there. So he's still living there. She's living upstate because she, she literally can't live there. This year, there was a congressional hearing. At that congressional hearing, a U.S. Uh, legislator asked a group of individuals representing the telecom industry, how much money are you spending on human studies to show that this technology is safe? How many studies are you doing? To no one's surprise, the industry spokespersons, two of them said, none. Not a penny was being spent, nor would it be spent, nor were any studies done. There were two problems with their answer and his question, because he showed concern. Representative Blumenthal. The issue was, as a member of Congress, he has direct access to the National Academy of Science, our most august body of science in America. He has access to all of the millions of studies in the peer-reviewed literature on PubMed, the government's own website where they only select high-quality peer-reviewed studies. Now, when you re realize what goes on behind the scenes in a legislator's office, rarely, except for bills they personally sponsor or are top co-sponsors, 90% of the work and the education on an issue comes by the staff. And it's not the chief of staff. That's the political coordinator. That's the person that decides which lobbyists are going to have a meeting with your legislator and pitch their deal to give your legislator money so the legislator will pass favorably a bill or law that benefits that industry. It is the people by the dozens that work for legislators who are tasked, and these are highly educated, frequently lawyers, they're very, very capable of surfing the internet, and they, within a five minutes, five minutes, could have found that there are 10 thousand studies showing the deleterious effects of electromagnetic frequencies from 1G to 5G. So what does it tell you when a person asks a question but does not then provide an answer? Now most of these are lawyers and there's a rule in law and that rule in law is never ask a question of someone that you are challenging if you don't know the answer, because you're opening a door that something can come through with you that could cause your case. So that meant to me that the people are then you're going to use the idea, well, we care about your health. We held hearings. Yeah, you held hearings. Why didn't you say at that hearing, legislator, there are, there are over 26,000 scientists that signed a letter that went to every government in the world saying don't use 5G because it has not been adequately tested on humans. You didn't talk about that letter. You didn't invite one of those 26,000 scientists. You invited no environmental scientists. You invited no toxicologists. 
you invited no medical doctors or expert in environmental chemical sensitivity. That means to me it was a sham dog and pony hearing, which is 99% of these hearings. People are using it so that they can get more votes by saying, well, we came down on the side of the consumer. No, you didn't. You didn't at all. Who's responsible? Before you protest something, understand what you're protesting. You should be protesting the Clintons because it was Bill Clinton who met, and like he always did with everything, he gave the entire Federal Communications Commission the power to give the industry and write the law that allows them to decide which building something will go on, which neighborhoods their signal towers will go on, and you as a citizen, I as a citizen, cannot stop them. In Oregon and some other cities that have said, we're not going to allow this, that'll be wiped away the first time they're challenged in a court. Because the law states that they have final decision making of where the tower goes. Now, right now we're in Manhattan. We're at, at 7th Avenue, right down here in, in the top part of the village. You can see the World Trade Center behind us. And what you're going to see very shortly, because they're not just on a roll, they're on a roll on steroids. Already at 42nd Street in Times Square, where you see massive amounts of lights, much like out of Blade Runner, one of those movies, we see all these gigantic signs. That's the beginning of the internet of all things. That's where they're going with this. And they've known this for a long time. They want everyone to feel that your life is made more complete if you can get something faster. But they're not telling you the cost to your brain. Now, when you start looking, pull it back further, you see that it's every single telecommunication company including the companies that have been spying on us. Did you remember when it was shown under the Obama administration that they have been spying on all Americans? And so they went back and changed the law so none of those telecom companies were held accountable. They were working hand in glove with the National Security Agency and the director of that who lied. Do you remember when Clapper lied before Congress? Where was the outcry on the left? There was none. Why wasn't he held in contempt and for perjury, as you would be? Because there's two systems in America. And if you don't understand that, you haven't been paying attention. So I'm saying look at the bigger picture. You have G5 over at the boat docks. G5 is going to tear down the trees on streets. G5 is going to be on every building for at least 400 feet because of short, high-frequency bursts. G5 was considered safe because when they were testing the G4, and G3, G2, and G1, <clears throat> they were controlling the test. And now we're experimenting on human beings, including our children, so they can make $60 billion a year profit. And then when kids started to get indoctrinated and in using the smartphones and put the monitors in your baby's room so you can see them anywhere, those are throwing out electromagnetic pulses. And babies' brains are smaller. Babies' skulls are thinner. They're susceptible to electromagnetic frequencies. Now teenagers, people in college, sleep with their cell phone under their pillow. You can see they're damaging our chromosomes. They're damaging the telomeres, which are the end caps of chromosomes. But they don't care. People in industry today only care about profit. They know the G5, 4, 3, 2, and 1 cause cancer. They've known it. So if a government agency knows it, where is your loyalty? To a proprietary interest of a for-profit corporation or to the health of hundreds of millions of people? So our government has lied to us nonstop. They have known that smart meters are 100 times more powerful than a cell phone. They have known all this. So. Look at the bigger picture. Just don't protest 5G. Protest the fact that the government allowed a law to be passed that sided specifically with the industry without any health studies being done at that time. And let's go for getting the law rescinded. And 
a moratorium on all 5G until health studies have been done without the industry participating, independent studies. When we do that, then we can make a difference. Otherwise, they're steamrolling this. They got the agencies of government, all agencies. They've got the White House. They have Congress and they have the media. The New York Times is complicit in this. So remember at some time in the future, when you have a pandemic, not an epidemic, a pandemic of environmentally induced illnesses in people with nosebleeds and ear bleeds, where their memory is going, where dementia at an earlier age is occurring, remember, the New York Times is a part of that. The Washington Post is a part of that. CNN and the dancing clowns over there with Anderson Cooper, they're a part of this because they have not done the exposés. Chris Hedges, Abby Martin, and others have done the real investigative reporting. We published two articles on the dangers of 5G in the last two weeks. I presented them on the air. They're free. Share them. I have over 100 videos on 5G, 4G, 3G, Deborah Davis and the other experts testifying. Share them. I'm here for one reason only. I'm here as a facilitator of resources. I'm here to give you the resources you can use to share. What can you do immediately? You can go to schools because four cases of cancer occurred in one school until they took down a tower and tell the school teachers, the parents, the administrators, the children. This school is dangerous to the children's health as long as you've got a cell tower on that property. Keep the cell towers 500 feet away from any school. You start with parents and you start with their children. And that's how you work it. Everything in America must be local and up. Do not assume that billionaires, rich philanthropists, great scientists and major new are going to come to your aid. They're not. They're part of the problem. You need, and by the way, who's the one person who's driving this and has been? Elon Musk. Elon Musk? Yes. Yeah. You know Tesla? Huh? He's got SpaceX satellites, right? Yes. They want to connect everything in the world so they can have, and he stated it, artificial intelligence in your life. And he already has started to promote a cap that you put on that connects to your brain and can work inside your brain. Do you really trust someone to work inside your brain no matter what they say, sugarcoating it? Artificial intelligence will be so smart it cannot be stopped. It will know every thought and control your emotions. It can control everything. Do you want every single electrical apparatus in the world that is connected to the internet, airplanes? What if someone decided to tap into that and use it for the wrong purposes? By a cell phone, right? A nuclear facility, a cell phone. So I don't want to see transhumanism. I don't want to see artificial intelligence replacing the ability of human beings to communicate, cooperate, and help one another because our governments, they've been captured or they're too dumb to realize the issues that are confronting them. And the trouble is, Edward Bernay was right. Tell a lie enough times and people will believe it. So we've been lied to. The media is nothing more than a captured propaganda machine. All of it. The good people in the media have left it. And they're on Progressive Radio Network or Truth Dig, Consortium News, you know, the, the sources that are unfunded, that are being challenged, that are being censored, that are being demonized by Wikipedia, never support Wikipedia, don't use it. Google and Facebook start using other forums because they've captured those. There are one big organization, one big club, as George Carlin said, and you ain't invited into it. I want to thank you all. I want to thank you for organizing this and for all of you coming.